when you talk to automotive experts, everybody is familiar with the term um, bill of materials. Bill of materials is basically the representation of the value of individual pieces that go into a car. And there is a specific bill of material for software. You can think about this bill of material in four buckets, and those buckets represent how software is being created and sold, and they are also organized in order of reducing transparency and increasing ambiguity. So starting with the most transparent and the most definitive one, the royalties. The concept of royalties is very similar to how software is traded in all other areas. You buy a CRM system and you pay to the vendor a specific royalty for the license fee. And uh, there is quite a bit of software in the vehicle that is also sold based on royalties. The next bucket uh, would be the money spent by the OEMs with the tier ones. It's the so-called engineering design and development fees or EDND. And part of this cost goes into software development. The problem is that this cost is typically mixed with the cost for developing uh, actual electronics hardware, and the transparency is quite limited. The next bucket would be the cost uh, spent internally by the OEMs, so basically all the software that is developed by the OEMs in-house. And uh, in addition to just developing software, the OEMs are also today in charge of developing and maintaining their software architectures and platforms. And this is the cost that should also be accounted for. And last but not least, um, there is quite a bit uh, more. <laughs> it's uh, kind of the chair on the pie of ambiguity. It's uh, what we call hidden costs. Usually it's associated with the software cost that goes into silicon, into actual chips. So the uh, semiconductor is not just a piece of hardware, but there is embedded software code that the cost for which should also be accounted for. Latest Brollenberger estimates suggest that the automotive industry at large spends somewhere between 25 to 30 billion dollars per year on developing, integrating, and maintaining software. This includes all those uh, four buckets above, and per vehicle that suggests that it is about three to four hundred dollars. The short answer is yes, and uh, to understand why we think about it, one needs to understand that there is a tremendous uh, change in the industry happening. Uh, the complexity of software that goes into vehicles is, incre is increasing uh, dramatically, and it leads to a change in uh, how software is actually being developed. The industry is gradually moving from the traditional automotive approach to software development to more tech-like development of software. And one of the, without really going into specific technical details, uh, one of the underlying developments is the change in architectures, going away from the existing monolithic architectures to more microservices architectures. We believe there will be a broad variety of business models, uh, some of them more focused on products, some more focused on services. Um, there are probably two that are worth highlighting. The first one is uh, service as a product. It's a true service offering and uh, you can think about today's EDD business that the tier ones have with the OEMs. Separate out the hardware, really focus on true software part of it and really treat it as a business. And uh, we already see quite a bit of evidence that this happening. The OEMs are transitioning to purchasing software separately from hardware. Today's business model is bundled, buying hardware and software together, but it's again, it's moving in the direction of software being purchased separately. And in many cases, a tier one is designated as a developer for software and an, as an integrator of the software stack but there is another company that would be doing actual hardware, um, manufacturing, designing and manufacturing the hardware. The other business model that's worth highlighting is uh, the software as a product. This is the model that is based on licenses and uh, royalties. We believe that um, the rest of the systems can also move in the direction of this business model. And uh, I'm personally quite excited about this business model for a reason that it truly allows to price software based on value. 